Hello everyone, my name is Chris Krause and I'm the product manager at WorkSoft and today I want to talk to you a little bit about our offering which will help you automate more in a scriptless manner. What we want to focus on is how to replace your UFT scripts easily. And UFT, some people may know it formally as QTP. So we have a program that basically lets you help replace UFT replacement. Um, the idea is we want to help you remove duplicates in your existing test library, quickly convert them using our UFT conversion test libraries into WorkSoft certified processes, and improve your testing while reduce your maintenance. What we found with customers is they've built large libraries of regression tests over time. What they've done is they've hired a consultancy and they've done some testing. There's a big test effort one year that we need to improve quality. They build manual and automated tests. And then two years later, they have another company come in and build tests. And there's probably a lot of overlapping of those tests, but they don't have a good repository of what functional validation they're covering and how their regression and automation testing is working. So within this program, we want to help you take that existing library of assets you've created and actually get a benefit out of them. What we found is customers with minimal effort um, are, is required to do this migration program. The trick is they're actually reducing their overall test library by 60 to 80 percent. The reason is they've actually got a lot of duplicate tests out there. They're testing the same processes over and over. Our multiple processes are very similar except there's one variation. And they don't know that because they've got tons of scripts they're looking at and it's just visual basic code and they're looking at things like that. So what we want to be able to do is convert them to certify so it's easier to maintain and edit those tests and we'll give you visualization of that process that's actually being tested. The idea is we want to improve your overall process automation. Most customers are seeing that improvement at the 80%. So an overview of how the program, program works is we basically want you to take some of your existing um, um, UFT tests that are working. We'll activate our capture technology and we're going to watch those work in your environment. And then we're going to analyze them. And what this means is we will look at the tests, we'll look at the T codes, the transactions, the programs are running, and we're going to actually start deduplicating them. And we're going to see how you're merging and doing the same testing over and over again, we'll identify those things for you. And then we'll come down with a subset of the optimal number of tests to give you the maximum coverage. Then what we do is we migrate those into our technology once we understand your end-to-end -end business processes. The migration basically takes your, your actions that your UFT tests are doing. Maybe they're, they're looping and doing data and tables and things like that. Or maybe they're just working on rote screens. We take those and we analyze them and reassemble them based on the actions in the SAP GUI and create an end-to-end -end automated test. So the idea is then, like our consultants will then schedule those to run. Maybe they run them every hour for two weeks to make sure that they're variableized well, all your dates are parameterized, and you have good data. So that when we walk away, you have a very robust integration library to work with. So, the idea is we want to actually simplify things by reducing the number of tests and giving you the certified WorkSoft platform to edit your tests in. So what does a business process look like? So if you think about your manual tests or your UFT scripted tests, they basically look like code. When we look at them, we observe how they're interacting with the SAP GUI and we're going to give you a graphical representation. And what we see in this picture is there's actually three variants of a sales order. So that means there's three different types of sales orders being started in the system. There's VAO1, VAO1 sub 1, VAO1 sub 2. And these are basically different flavors of the orders. Maybe they're using different combinations of fields and distribution centers and channels, but then they keep working. Um, they keep merging into this second transaction in VAO1N. So what we can identify is there actually is reusage in this process. So even though you have sales orders that start in different variations, they merge into a reusable component, VLO1N. And then some of them traverse down to VLO, VLO2 or LT3 and so forth. So what we do in the program is we run your QTP or UFT library, we observe them, and we provide a graphical representation. Now, even though you see three kind of core variations or six total variations of this process, there could have been 50 or 60 tests run. 
what we do is we deduplicate and merge together the things that have happened over and over again. So your overall number of tests is smaller, but it's just data variations. It's not variations in the overall process we're testing. So an example of this is we can see here there was three um, entries in the sales order screen, DAL1. So when we do this conversion, we observe the test running. We'll give you screenshots. You can see the different data that was entered. So a variation for us is they've entered two fields, they've entered five fields. They're working on the same screen, but there's two variations of that ordering process. Well, if you think about your test library, you may have 500 tests. They all start on VA01, but there's only three or four variations of those. The rest is data. So when we do this deduplication and consolidation, we actually understand how you're interacting with the screens. Now, that's interesting, but there's some value behind having an understanding of the data and how you're interacting with the screens. Um, at Worksoft, we find that it's not helpful to be able to read code to understand what's happening. And quite honestly, no one ever documents what their tests are actually doing. So with our technology, when we discover what you're actually testing, we can give you um, printed documentation of the end-to-end -end business process. So for example, in this, we call it a gen doc in slang. I can see the screen, and on the bottom, I can see every field that was entered and the value that was entered there. So as the tests traverse through your transactions, VA1, VLL1, in, and so forth, we'll show you the fields are interacted with and the data is interacted with. So what happens is the output of this is not only that you get new processes that are optimized, you're actually getting very specific documentation of what the new tests are doing. And what we find is this is helpful with um, IT departments or QA working with business analysts. You want to take these descriptions and have them sign off. These are the business processes that we're testing. Are these the ones you're happy with? And they can, if they visually see it, they'll understand, is this hitting their rainy day scenarios or their, or their sunny day scenarios, right? So getting documentation along with a script is even more valuable because no one really knows what their libraries do. They all know they have VB script. They know they've done some parameterization. They've added some data. But they really don't know, have a good library documenting what the tests are. Okay? So we'll give you that as part of this process in our analytics. The next thing that happens is we will actually go generate the test library. So when we generate the test libraries, because we're using um, our technology to generate them, we generate them in a very deterministic or standardized way. So basically, everything is grouped in sub-processes by transactions. So if you, everybody hit vl one in one instead of having six copies of that or seven copies of that, we detect that and we'll always reuse the same one. So in programming terms, we call that um, sub-processes or, or reusage of things. When we generate the tests and certify, we actually detect that and generate those things for you. So this is an actual test for certify. So you notice it doesn't start with anything like int main void or include libraries. It's not scripting based. It's actually just an object action framework. What we see is I have an object that I've got a, a T code, I've got an object that I've got an order number, an object that I've got input fields. We show you the objects and the input data. So if you wanted to go edit this test or change it, you're literally just changing the text fields of the input or using a drop-down list. So we feel that moving away from scripting to write your tests to an object action model is more effective. What this says is it allows people who are not necessarily heavy-duty programmers to participate in the quality lifecycle. The um, object action framework simply allows a user to say, here's an object, it's the, the OKCD OK field, and I'm going to put in VA01 or put in an action code. This is the, the sold to party, the ship to party. I'm going to put in the values. So they don't have to worry about setting variables and working with variables and navigating an XPath. It's they're just declaring the action that they want to do on the screen. What this does is it allows the test to be more easily managed. If you ever need to update the test and add more fields, it's literally um, going to the UI and saying, add this field. It's not take a programming class, learn how to do an if-then-else statement to decide if this is necessary or not, and validate things. So we feel that there's a dramatic change in the way we actually build the tests, the object action framework, which makes it easier to maintain. So, what literally happens is we've observed the QTP tests interact with the SAP GUI, we visualize it, and then we create this automation library to complement it. 
And because we're doing that deduplication, I don't need as many test scripts to keep the coverage. So people may say, hey, that's great. Maybe I'm, I'm not pleased with HP right now, or I'm, I want to reduce licenses there. I want to use certified to end-to-end -end processes. But what's my next step? OK, what can you actually do if you actually have your tests and certify? So this um, activity kind of brings up some interesting things. If we've observed, say, all your happy paths through the system, and we've documented them and analyzed, what we can do, in turn, is import those into Solution Manager. So in Solution Manager 7.2, you have the concept of blueprints. You know, the new blueprints are basically graphically drawn. They're no longer the three-tiered hierarchy like in 7.1. Well, if we've observed all your user paths through the system, we can automatically populate your blueprints for you. We'll give you the graphical representation of it, and then we can also give you the library of the processes and their hierarchies. So what we actually can do is help you um, jumpstart your solution managers. So anybody who's using solution manager, say, for transport management, or they're looking to do more advanced things like mapping their monitoring, or their BPCA, and their change analyzers, a big problem for people is understanding what's my current business process and updating those. So once you've got your library of processes and analyze, we import those into here. And we'll give you the full details here. So this isn't just a script replacement program to a different tool. It actually should help you manage your environments better with, with Solution Manager. So the other thing that happens is we need to figure out how to manage lifecycle. So one thing my customers say is, I'm really interested in moving towards risk-based testing. And I want to do you know, change analyzer and SAP. We're getting more agile in our delivery. We want to actually deliver changes to SAP every other week versus every six months. But we know we need to get our automation up, and we need to get our change management done better. So when you're working with Solution Manager, BPC is how you do your risk-based testing and how you look for those changes. The trick is you actually need to um, update your T-bombs on a regular basis so you understand what's happening in the system. So our best practice is to take the test scripts we've generated, export those into blueprints, and then schedule those tests to run, say, on a Friday night with your T-bomb active. So we start updating the database in the back end of Solution Manager so you have active T-bombs. And then when you come in on Monday and you want to do change management and you use BPCA, you actually have updated system information so you can map the changes, say, in a transport to test case coverage or um, what you're changing in your environment to so help you do more risk-based testing. So um, when we talk about having customers change the way their scripts are being written, it's not just move from technology one to technology two. Um, so moving from a scripting-based testing to an object action framework and certify, what we talk about is actually changing the way you think about testing. Let's identify your duplicate tests, let's consolidate them, and let's get um, a fewer number of tests giving you maximum coverage, and then use those assets as part of your life cycle, your management within your SAP organization. Update your blueprints, and then run your tests, your automated tests, to update your blueprints. And that way you get more life cycle or better iterations in your SAP environment. Because what we're finding is people are very interested in automated testing, but they don't need it to be just thought about as single regressions. They need it to be a process change for their SDLC. So kind of to recap the, the benefits of using WorkSoft Certify and converting your processes over, is one is reduce a maintenance cost. Because we're going to give you a subset of the tests and we'll give you documentation of what the tests are actually doing, you have easier maintenance. If there's a change, you can look at your tests and understand what they're doing versus reading scripting and code. We found that our customers, when they do this, they, they think more about, I'm not just testing three T codes, I'm actually testing an end-to-end -end business process, so I'm actually getting better coverage there because I'm spending more time thinking about my overall process versus how to write a scripting in a programming language. Um, the documentation is invaluable for business users and um, IT to sign off and to collaborate that they're happy with the changes. Um, we find that we do get consolidation of about 60 to 80 percent of your scripts. So you have um, um, a smaller library of scripts, but you're maximizing the coverage. Now, the nice thing is I mentioned that we have deep integration with Solution Manager to create blueprints and update your, um, all your T-bombs for BPCA. 
Those tests could also be run from Quality Center, um, JIRA, HPLM. Um, they could run from your IBM Rational tools. So when you build that test library, it's going to up to you where you want your system record to be to run these tests. Okay? Um, and the last thing is, which is the newest thing we've introduced, is actually helping you with your blueprinting and solution manager. Because at WorkSoft, we're really thrilled with the new Solution Manager 7.2 that it's moved to an agile workflow. So we want to help people embrace that and get better at doing those processes and get more releases a year. So of course, it isn't real software unless you've run this at customers. And so we've been running this um, program with our customers for a couple years now. Um, one of these was a very large federal agency. So they basically had chosen WorkSoft to help modernize their approach to testing. Um, they had uh, QTP and UFT scripts in their existing libraries, and they wanted to move away from scripting to our platform. So what we did is we looked at their library that 2,500 um, QTP scripts, and they need to be converted to certify. But they realized there was probably overlap there, but they didn't realize how much. So by using our visualization technology and analyze to draw the pictures and deduplicate the processes, they reduced those 2,500 scripts to actually 300 uh, certified processes. So they could get the same coverage, but with fewer tests. The other thing that did is it reduced their testing time. Because if you think about the wall clock, how long would it take to run 2,500 tests? If they took two minutes or 10 minutes, that's a long time. If we get rid of the duplication and we do better consolidation, we only have to run 300 tests. Even if those 300 tests ran five to 10 minutes, we would get it done in a much shorter wall clock. So they technically reduced their regression cycle to two weeks by getting rid of unnecessary tests that they didn't need. Okay. Okay. So if you're interested to hear more about this or our customers, we have um, Well Cornell Medical speaking tomorrow, um, at, um, or actually today at 3.30, and then we're at booth um, 738. So if you want to see a little bit more about the replacement program and how we do it, or understand the visualizations and analyze, come by and visit. Um, if you have any specific questions, um, I'll be over here in the discussion room for the next 20 minutes to talk about how this works, if you're interested in a little more technical detail of how we operationalize it and so forth. So with that, I'd like to thank you for your time and have a great show.